Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off a 50 cent pick four at Santa Anita on Saturday with a Kentucky Oaks qualifying point race. Perhaps if the number four Kinza trained by Bob Baffert doesn't win, we're going a mile and a 16th for three year old Phillies. Let's take a look at the field for the Santa Isabel and Kinza started twice. She's been impressive both times. She's run fast races. Hence, she is four to five. Yeah, just the horse to beat right back in here, Dan. I guess the question in this race is how easy can she possibly get off on the lead this time? Because she got off easy on the lead last time. It was somewhat surprising with a Philly as talented as Copian. They just let Kinza walk on the front end last time out. We'll throw up our time form U.S. pace projector, and there she is. Kinza up front with the number five. She's a Tempest who showed no interest in going after her in the Las Virginis last time out, sitting in second. Right, but she's a Tempest does have plenty of speed if they elect to get more aggressive this time, Dan. And I don't see why they wouldn't want to do that here um, in a race, just to at least find out what they have there are some other horses who could be forward as well but it does seem like it might come down to the four and the five as far as the pace is concerned the number one is ultimate authority and this filly has gotten better since being stretched out around two turns it looked like she had she's a tempest's number two starts back and she couldn't seal the deal here was her third lifetime start however and she's cruising into the stretch on the outside and i'm curious as to your opinion here because mike i thought you wanted to hang again yeah, I kind of agree with you. It, it, the main reason I think that too, Dennis, because the horse that she's fighting within the stretch here, that horse seemed like she went a pretty legitimate pace up front and was tired in the stretch. And, and Ultimate Authority doesn't want to put her away, but she's also never losing to this horse at the end of the race. And I thought it was a good performance. I thought she ran well two starts back, even though she came up a little bit short and she still has forward to go. A lot of scope for improvement. And you have to like the fact that she's paired up 90 buyers now and starts two and three could be a signal. She could take another step forward and she's far from slow from the gate. She could work out a nice pace tracking ground saving trip. Shy Lowe's mistress is the number two. This is a daughter of Vino Rosso who ran at Turfway Park over there synthetic surface last time out, graduated in nice fashion with Lasix. She won't get Lasix on Saturday and she's back on dirt. She needs pace help she needs pace she's got to improve also this is you know, a filly who just hasn't run a race so far that's going to make her competitive in here but i thought she looked good winning last time dan i also felt like she ran pretty well in that uh, dirt route two starts back at church she had no real chance to win there but she made a big move on the turning she kept coming through the stretch it feels like she wants to run all day long there's a lot of pedigree here Trainer Doug O'Neill showed some confidence in the three Pacific Rose last year, running her as a maiden in a couple of graded stakes races, dropped her back in class and distance for this maiden optional claimer at Santa Anita last month. Pacific Rose had to work on a pretty solid pace, Mike, down towards the inside. It looks like she could be in trouble, but she's just best as the chalk. Yeah, she's going to gut this thing out here. Um, it, it's not a bad performance, Dan, and obviously they ran her finally in the right kind of a race there. It feels like she's in way over her head against this. Nice day. performance, though, however, fending off several challenges. Maybe we'll see some of this speed as she stretches back out around two turns. Kinza looks like the controlling speed for Baffert. First two starts, both impressive. Here's the win in Las Virginias. First time around two turns. She makes the lead. Copian, who's pretty good in her own right, is going to take her crack at Kinza. But I just think Kinza's tactical advantage was a little bit too much. Yeah, I mean, they just sort of let her have the lead here. And it felt like the plan, I guess, with Copion was to concede early in this race and sit off her. Listen, Copion seems like a really nice horse, as is she's a Tempest who's third. So this is a quality win, no doubt, for Kinza. But she also had all the best of it, Dan. I like what I've seen for both of her starts. I feel like there's a ton of talent here. But maybe there's a little bit of an issue with her as a distance horse. I'm not so sure how far she really wants to go. She's a Tempest, the number five. You just saw her run third in the Las Virginis. She defeated Ultimate Authority on the lead two starts back. She conceded for the pocket trip last time and ran just fine. I think it's interesting that Steve Knapp puts the blinkers on. And you look at the workout time since the blinkers have come on. We've seen her perk up. A bullet in 46 and change. A half in 47 and change. She seems to be fresh with these blinkers. And maybe she'll show that sort of speed on Saturday. Yeah, maybe they will. I mean, listen, they found out last time they can't beat Kinza if they concede to her. So they got if nobody else goes, then they're going to have to take up the running here. She ran well enough two starts back to consider her here. It was a race long duel there. It was a short field, but she got the job done. Here's an interesting alternative for a quality trainer in Mark Latt. This is the six, Navy Bell, an expensive daughter of midshipman who won her career debut from off the pace in this race, going six and a half.
furlongs a maiden special weight and frankie de Torre was aboard navy bell and we see navy bell in here just attack the pace setter turning for home puts Suro to bed pretty quickly and goes about her business with a very strong 81 buyer for a first time starter yeah i liked everything about this debut and they took her back early but they didn't have to she got out of the gate well it seemed like she had speed and the plan was just to sort of take her back and they came running around the turn um defeated a couple of short priced Baffert horses in there who were second and third. She just ran away from there. That was a serious debut from this Billy. And Mark Lett's great with first time starters. He obviously had her ready and this is a way tougher spot, but I got a feeling this, this feeling's pretty good. From this post position, Frankie's just going to break out of there, see how the speed develops. And if it goes fast, maybe this one can be running on at the end. Where's my ring is the number seven. This horse missed last time out. This was the one that ultimate authority beat. Again, she had her chances. She went a pretty legitimate pace. She just wasn't good enough that day. And now she faces a tougher spot. Yeah, and a tougher pace scenario too, it probably feels like. Because even, I mean, she went pretty fast, I thought, in that most recent start. But even if they don't go as fast here, she's going to be up there with some quality horses. And it just doesn't feel like she's going to get loose this time. I still thought she ran pretty well in that in that last start. She's still a maiden after six tries. Her uncoupled stable mate, the number eight, if you ain't first, you're last. She's a maiden winner, but it was against $20,000 sellers. Here's that race right now. It was her first route attempt going a mile in here. And as you can see, there are two horses in the race and everybody else is far, far behind. Yep, I'm going to get the job done here. I have a feeling she's going to be last this time. <laughs> she was first in this race. And again, she was game in the stretch, but it's just a miles and a world different from a class standpoint from this $20,000 maiden claimer to the Kentucky Oaks qualifying point race, the Santa Isabel. Top pick time for the Santa Isabel. Kinza, I think, is going to get through this, Mike, but I think it is kind of an important race. It's not a gimme race for her because she's going to have to stretch her speed another 16th of a mile with a couple of fresh faces. I agree. I just, I'm very interested to see what she does, though, Dan. She's looked really good in her first two starts. I think there's a ton of talent here, and I ultimately decided not to try to beat her in this race. Very interested to see what the six does, though. I think that throw is good. Curious to see what we get from the five. She's a Tempest with the blinkers on. Will they be more aggressive with her coming out of the gate? But Kins is going to be the favorite. She is the horse to catch. She is the horse to beat. Four, six, two, one for Mike. Four, five, one, seven for me. It's the grade three Santa Isabel. First leg of a 50 cent pick four at Santa Anita on Saturday. Good luck.